Hey everybody, this is Scott Homan with Witness Underground, the documentary, and we have today David Quesada from the Bloody Tuesdays. Right now, we are in a document or a Kickstarter um, for raising finishing funds to finally release Witness Underground into the world through distribution and some marketing. So we have this amazing crowdfund. It's like everything we've ever put together, everything we've dreamed of for years to put together, every artist who we could, we got in touch with through the nuclear gopher community, everyone who left the religion and then went and made more music, which is almost double the amount of albums. The campaign at, has 32 albums and someone wrote me last night. They want to include their wow. album. So it's like, just, just like buying the package of music is 32 full albums of music. And there's amazing that's, music that's in there. Me. And, um, the, yeah, the, and David Casada's music is in there, The Bloody Tuesdays. So let's just get right into it. Uh, please check out our Kickstarter. David, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are yourself, Scott? I know you've been busy. <laughs> yeah, the campaign is a lot more work than most people know about. Mostly it's just talking to everyone you've yeah. ever met. Um, and then and then organizing people you don't really know to tell other people that they think it's cool. <laughs> um, check it out. Uh, but it's interesting because we have people in uh, England, uh, people in across the entire country of USA, um, who are helping spread the word and some people that are no connection to the film or think yeah. it's really cool. And, and yeah, it's going well. We're at 35%, 35.5% exactly wow. as of yesterday. So yeah, it's good. We're in week, we're just, I mean, just ended week one. So week two, we have a four uh -huh. week thing. And um, this week is generally, it's second week is usually like a little bit slower. Um, we're hoping to change that by doing these interviews and getting deeper into the process. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. We're excited. It's exciting. Um, and it's amazing to see already to have like, to, to put the word out there. I mean, it's one thing to ask like, Hey, we want to make a project and yeah. get money. And, and like, we're sort of saying like, we're, we finished in a project that will change your life. You need to see this. And also your money will, you'll get, you're basically buying the movie. You're buying the movie, you're buying the music. And that helps fund us with the actual art that you can then yeah. own forever. Um, and there's also you can get physical stuff too, which Ryan's going to slave away in his basement and like make stuff or having some places get some CDs get oh, pressed that's awesome. um, to get sent out at certain levels. And this is actually like a big boost for Ryan's uh, for nuclear Gopher yeah. studio, which is Ryan's like reboot. He wants to do distribution as a part. He was recording artists and tracking them, mastering, doing all the make the music. And his next phase with nuclear Gopher is to turn it into like a nineties style distribution uh, label basically but like a very diy like it's just uh the finances make sense for the yeah. artist and that's, anyway, that's exactly it's like right. it's really interesting because we're like okay let's yeah. test everything out let's do 32 albums in one month Dude, that's <laughs> that's crazy but yeah that's that's totally yeah in my way that's that's what i grew up listening to in the 90s was that kind of style of music which style that like 90s do-it-yourself midwestern you know independent rock Oh yeah. So like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, for him as well. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. I feel like him and I, we've become such good friends through making this film that like, it's like this interesting marriage of like banana Allen films and witness underground and you yeah, go for all like really coming together into this fusion of like, <clears throat> it's like my dream. It's my dream come true that he does this thing because, and he, he's conveyed that it's like his, his passion as well to like actually reboot it and just have fun with music for the yep. rest of his life. And I'm so excited to see that. Yeah. Uh, How about you? So what, when we interviewed you, it's one of my favorite, I tell everyone it's my favorite interview. I've been on the top of our website for our podcast. Like if you want to just get a taste of the podcast, listen to this two episode <laughs> thing with the bloody Tuesdays, David Quesada. It's absolutely my favorite thing. Um, so I'm so happy to have oh, you. Thank you. Today. What, um, yeah, how how has that been? Have have you gotten any feedback from being on the podcast? Or? Yeah, it's it's really interesting too. Uh, uh, I was talking to um, a new activist that I met online the other day, and uh, we were messaging. And so she asked, you know, I asked, you know, what's kind of, what's your story coming out? And she asked the same thing, and we both kind of had videos already set up that kind of went over our stories. So I thought, cool, like. Well, here's the link, here's the oh, link yeah. <laughs> to, uh, to my story that kind of gives my background. So uh, it's kind of cool to just. It's like a business yeah, card. It's kind of like a. It's like a deepest business exactly. card ever. Like, here's, here's my, my story. story. <laughs> and, you know, watch it at your yeah. leisure. So, yeah, it's been really cool to have that and just to be able to, you know, to point people in that direction, uh, you know, give you guys 
some uh, some exposure stuff too. Because uh, yeah, it was a it was a fun interview. And it, yeah. it really I had never really talked to either one of you before, except for you know we kind of briefly talked mm-hmm. at at uh, Wes's show, but um, that trip, you know it just yeah. felt really natural. Like I think that's why people enjoy it is because it really is just you know three guys just talking about so much different things. Like we, we covered so much, so many different topics and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, it was definitely fun. And, uh, yeah, I think that the way you, you handled the story of telling of your, your background and your life and your exit really shaped how I now run my interviews. Cause it was just so natural. It's like, well, this happened. And then this, it was just chronological, but like it built the story in such a nice yeah, way. So I try to like think about the David kiss out of method. <laughs> Yeah, and I I try to be as as open and honest about it because you know, I was talking to someone last week, I haven't heard back from them, but they were feeling really depressed and suicidal as they're going through their process and it's just like, man, I remember being there. I remember being there just feeling like there's no one out there who's gone through this, who understands this. And that's really what like my goal was when we first did that interview was like if we can just find one person, Scott, that's going through that kind of stuff and it stops them from doing something, you know, drastic or, or regretful, then it's already yeah. a success. So, yeah, that's been a comment people have been making, especially people who have dealt with the idea ideation of suicide or even people who have attempted They're like this kind of content could save lives. It yeah. will save lives. Yeah. And I think part of me was more when I made it, it wasn't, thinking on that level. Although that was like in the back of my mind, I know people who've killed themselves yeah. in the religion and I've heard a lot more stories. People have done it on the outside. I'm not talking to people in the religion that often to know, but like there, it's a rampant right. problem. And, um, and the idea of like showing a path where you can have a life that's worth living after was a big part of the mission. And it's like one of the themes, obviously like the last 20 minutes of the movie is like the big, Oh, this is calm. Like you can have like a nice, chill yep. life and like look at these artists who yeah. did it and like maybe art is a path to do that or some other kind of self-expression like dive into something that you actually care yeah. about it actually has meaning to you yeah exactly yeah if one life is saved like that would be worth making yep. the movie and i honestly think that this film has the power to do that thank you how did you feel about having your song included in the intro oh man one moment yeah, of every time I, every time I see the, the trailer, I get so excited. Like my ears perk up. I'm just like, <laughs> so cool, yeah, right? I'm just like, Oh man, that's, that's, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's so weird. It's so weird. Like just, just, <laughs> was that your voice? No. I've always wondered if you did voice manipulation on um, the leader of I, the cult, the religion. I did. Or... So like initially, cause that, that song that you, that you took that, that, that little sample from, was about the governing body, like specifically, and like just yeah. you know, the mind fuck they give you, and then you know, coming out of it and and just feeling so lost. And so I was like, I, I want to include, I want to include one of them in there, like as a, you know, as a, as a fuck you to them, because I know it would make them uncomfortable if they ever found out about it. And so I found I found yeah. this little clip of him just. <laughs> just being so culty about that. Just stick to what we authorize it. You'll be safe. And I was just like, that's perfect. Like, and so I put it on there and just having him speak normally just wasn't doing it for me. You know, I just, it was just more triggering than anything. (laughs) So I, I started manipulating with different plugins and I just got this weird, like alien robot like plugin and kind of just messed with it. till it had like the perfect (laughs) amount of like weird, robot where you take us to your leader kind of thing, but still enough to where you could recognize who it was. And then when I finally heard that part, I was like, yeah. okay, yeah, I, I got to throw that in there. Like, that's just perfect. <laughs> so that's, uh, I think, it, I think it's that's perfect. Tony, Tony three. Yeah. Tony, the turd. Yeah. <laughs> Type that's Tony. Tony. And it's so funny. Cause like <laughs> that song specifically is about like, like one thing that kept me motivated, whether it's good or bad, negative or positive. One thing that kept me motivated when I go through those dark times when I was like alone, homeless, had nobody, you know, those really dark days, I would think, but I want to live to see the fall. I know these fools are going to fall. 
<laughs> sure enough, like a year later, you know, all that stuff come out and it's still like, it's still really weird and shady right, yeah, about so what's going on with that guy specifically, how he just disappeared. Yeah. Specifically, he got cut out of the leadership yeah. of the religion and that may not sound that impressive to anyone. It's very strange, but at the history of the religion, that's only happened yeah. three times. One guy left and wrote a <laughs> book about it. The crisis of conscience, what has like took half of the population of the religion out in the 1970s, yep. 80s. And then, and that's still an amazing book. People should read it. Actually just got, our film just got compared to his book. And I was like, whoa, that's like, that's almost too high. Of price. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, he left. And then two guys, a couple of years later, I think it was Greeley's or something. And then one more person got yeah. kicked out and no one really is. They never really told clearly why, but some people know why, um, but it's like hard to prove. <laughs> But they got they got removed officially, just like Tony. So it's like, what happened forty years ago to those two guys? That's also happening right now. Like, what's this political yeah. shakeup? It's really interesting because it's almost like a like a little tremor of an earthquake that's yeah. about to happen or something. A little indication that something's that's a problem. exactly what I thought too. I'm like, that's that's just like you said. You know, it hasn't happened very often. So anytime any any kind yeah. of leadership gets shook up like that, you got to scratch your head and go, what's the inside baseball on this? Yeah. So yeah, right. but yeah. yeah, that's how that little sample started. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I love it, and I, I think those three albums you did, especially the first two, um, "Stranded on Saturn" and "Hymns of a Millennial's Dawn," just unlike any other music ever, you dove in so deep and made it so like every song has like a little piece of the faith in it with a little twist of of like a yeah. little finger. And, or like a goofy thing or a twist on the lyrics. Yep. It's like, oh, right. Like that is a really creepy lyric yeah. in that song that we chanted every couple months. Um, this is what is what they're really saying. Yeah. Or, you know, like there's like little moments. It's like prof it's profound stuff in there that you're revealing in a, the most creative way imaginable. Even like using their own copyrighted like yep. piano <laughs> tracks. And, you know, I'm sure you have your own taste that twists on it. But um, like that's like a recognizable right. melody but then changing lyrics. Like there's things that I wanted to do as a witness that, with music like that, that now that it's out, you're out, it's like, Oh yeah. Fair game. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what happened. Cause a lot of that, a lot of stuff got written while I was still like Pimo. So it kind of forced mm -hmm. me to be like, Oh, I kind of got to hide this because I, I still had some witnesses that were helping out with my music. And you know, I was oh, yeah. like, Oh, if, if it's too obvious then I'm going to get ratted out. So a lot of that, motivation was yeah. just like how can i be clever <laughs> without being caught and then you know there's a part there's right. part where it's pretty obvious and blatant that i'm already out <laughs> you know because both of those albums got, kind of got written at the same time together and but the second one mm -hmm. i really focused in on like this is my this is my swan song to leave in and it has a lot more of that in there did you ever see the article I wrote on my blog? Uh, it's called, um, it's like Rage Room Revelation Lies, <laughs> something like that. Basically, I, I wrote, I got creative one day. I had a list of really important things uh -oh. you need to do. And I wrote them down. And I put them in order of how I was going to do them. And I sat down on my computer. And instead, I spent six hours writing this blog oh, post. And I did nothing on my list. And I was so proud of it. And in the end, I was like, how do I tie, like, oh, I was like, how do I tie this moment in time to something meaningful that's happening now, the present moment, not just like a nostalgic blog post. About yeah. The past. I was writing basically about like, we were studying the revelation book in my last years in the religion. Oh, wow. And we'd go home after the book study and like not go home, but like I'd bring my friends from book study from the religious yeah. meeting um, who I was close to. We did, we did music stuff together back to my place down, you know, the neighborhood. And then we drink beer and wine and we'd ha we'd like say like well they said this today and i don't agree with it this is what it says in the bible we'd like get the bible out. we'd have like our own church yeah. post church church meeting where we talk about our real beliefs and then we'd be drinking and it would get ridiculous and then we ha i built like a, r a area that was like dedicated to breaking glass in the basement oh, wow. and we would like scream and throw glass at the wall and it would shatter and we had this like pile of glass before to go to the laundry room you had to like walk <laughs> over this pile of glass um we never really cleaned it up it was kind of trashy, but, and it's, but it was like, well, looking back at it, I'm like, I'm talking about it, like I'm proud of it and I am, but like, it's also an indication that something was wrong in our lives that we would like go to church and then come back and do that for hours um, and end it with screaming and breaking yeah. things. Um, 
<laughs> you know? Um, so I wrote this down because it was like, this is a really important moment. And I was like, how do I tie it to that? Oh, the revelation. Oh, the art from David's music from the Bloody Tuesdays. And so then I like incorporated oh, I, yeah, parts of your I songs. Do I, like, that have, like, the yeah, I do remember that article. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was just, it's fun to like have something that's like, here's a piece of art that I feel so proud that it, it exists and I didn't make it, but it's like a part of, a part of like our collective past. That's like a really fun in, entertaining look without being too triggering. Yeah. <laughs> it's like just enough trigger where it's like, Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. But I'm cel it's celebratory. I worry about that. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, man, is this too triggering? <laughs> I don't know. I think that's how I met <laughs> Wes was I had found this, this randomly had found this little like, Casio uh, mini keyboard and I was just messing with it one day and posted mm -hmm. um, me playing life without and at last because that was like one of the first songs I ever learned on piano I taught myself piano when I was like 11 because my grandparents were, were mm -hmm. uh, full-time pioneers so I was home a lot with just a, a empty house and a piano and you know obviously you hear that music wow. all the time <laughs> so I posted that and, and Wes right. had like commented <laughs> on it about it like being, you know, funny and triggering. That's kind of how our relationship started. It's like, yeah, like I never, you know, that's cool. I hope it's not too triggering for people. I hope they get that. It's, you know, it's more of a mockery than anything. Yeah. So Wesley, David shout out. Yeah. Awesome guy. Great music. He's also included in the campaign. His, uh, his album never late been better as a digital download. And then later, higher levels as a, a oh, vinyl wow. a signed vinyl so if you want wesley david's music he's actually donated a bunch of versions or a bunch of copies uh, oh. for people at us if you contribute a certain yeah, level so that's cool yeah um what are you working on next you did bloodless after those two albums which was like i feel like there's not a lot of jw ties to that album aside from the title how could you comment oh yeah on that? yeah it's like it's like yeah less. it's definitely Anyways. um that's pretty much was a lot of stuff that I've written post um, angry XJW. So like um, my first album uh, is like space theme because um, I was trying to just figure out like, where do I go from here? Like now that I've lost all these beliefs, like, you know, one thing like when you go through stuff now, like it's so tempting to like automatically go into like, prayer mode or you know something like that and it's like man how do i like rewire my brain so like that that almost so very space theme because like not only did i feel like isolated and alone and out in space but like i was finding a lot of comfort just in like science stuff you know just being able to study science completely openly without having you know that voice in your head going got to correct that you got to correct that that didn't really happen um so after that album i was still pimo so a lot of that stuff was kind of hidden and then the second album came out and that was obviously very after i had left in no holds bar and so a lot of that's that whole album is like you said it's just somehow connected some way with the religion and then after that you know i was still working on music and songs and i thought okay well you know here's an opportunity if people are still interested in my music and i'm still around i can start to like open up more about just writing music in general, writing music that I want, writing music that doesn't necessarily have to do with anything. So that third album is mainly mm -hmm. just, you know, songs that I wrote that have really nothing much to do with anything about my past in, in the religion. But then I needed like, I needed like a, a title and, you know, because a lot of it was very like shoegaze influenced, you know, I love my bloody Valentine. And I was like, okay, blood, bloody, like, mm -hmm. oh, bloodless. Like, bloodless is such a triggering word, you know, because now I, I've never ever heard bloodless mm -hmm. other than like bloodless surgery, you know, for, for J dubs. Right. So I was like, oh man, like, <laughs> maybe I'll just throw in that one last tie in. I was like, that seems like an appropriate. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that's cool. You told us on the last interview. Oh, do you have something oh, yeah, else, yeah. Go ahead. else you wanted to yeah. say? Sorry. Uh, in the last interview that you had about three more albums in you that you knew for sure you're going to go knock out. Um, I know you've, you've got a family, so there, there's all kinds of reasons why you might not have done that, but I'm oh, curious yeah. where you're at it, with um, album um, four. 
there's been a stall because last year my computer fried out on me. And so uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get that repaired so I don't have to start all over again. Because, yeah, I, I saw a lot of stuff mm. recorded. Um, so as soon as that gets repaired, you know, yeah, I do have probably about two or three albums that I can that can come out. I have one album that's kind of like 60s psychedelic rock inspired. So kind of that era. Um, I was also mm. working on another album that's more like 90s rock. Uh, influence so a lot of like if you smash Nirvana with Radiohead to kind of see what comes out stuff like that okay. so I have <laughs> I have those yeah. two that are definitely we're in the middle of like finishing post production right before the computer crash so hopefully I'll be able to get that back and running sometime this year or the beginning of the next year uh, let's talk offline after about about how we can maybe we can yeah, help sure. you with that because I want those albums to come out. So. <laughs> and you're, you're part of the, the Nuclear Gopher Witness Underground world. So. I know. I think after <laughs> after all this, we're um, going to have to all get matching Witness Underground Gopher tattoos. Did you see my post yeah, in the Discord? Yeah, that's, that's what got me thinking about that. It, could, okay. it, it reminded me of like, yeah. And like, uh, right here. That's where I'm getting Yeah, at. I think that'd be cool. It reminded me of Lord of the Rings. How, like, yeah, I want to get a Nuclear yeah, Gopher how, tattoo. Like, after after they finished yeah. the movies, they all got matching one ring tattoo somewhere. I was like, hey, camaraderie. I like that idea. Oh, like yeah, the actors got, themselves? Yeah, they the all actors. got ring tattoos That's afterwards. Cool. So I was like, yeah, it's kind of cool to have like a under witness underground nuclear gopher hat going for everybody. Yeah. Total weird aside, the son of v Vigo, what's yeah. the name of the actor who played like the, Vigo, the king? Yeah. That, um, yeah, Mortensen. His son, um, well, the, Vigo married uh, the singer from X. I can't remember her name. She's famous from the late seventies, the mm -hmm. band X, and they had this kid. And um, so this, their son, who's like our age, um, he found this band is like two women who were teens, like 15, 17 or something, that were in a band called Polly Skating Polly, and they're so good. And he made a documentary called skating Polly about the, about the band and the mom from the singer of the band X, like mentored oh, wow. them to get them to keep them fully indie, but like help them develop their sound and their record. And this, this film played the same, the next day after ours played in Minneapolis at the sound and scene film and music festival. And it was, it's so good. And their band is so good. You gotta check out skating Polly shout yeah. out to the Mortensons and the band X and skating Polly. Oh yeah. I but it's also cool to like have like our film like sit next to something like that. It's like oh yeah, I know these people are legends yep. in the world, and they're like hanging out in the hotel lobby and they're showing their film after ours or before <laughs> ours. You know, it's like how would my life become this? I've never expected. That's that, so right? surreal, huh? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. And more opportunities like that keep coming up. Like I keep being introduced to people that are like have been heroes in my life. And it's like, ha I didn't expect to ever meet this human being. Amazing. Um, it's like making a piece of art. All of a sudden you're at this, like you're in this other yeah. universe. Um, I, and yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah. It's awesome to see, to see uh, all this happening to you. Yeah. And I want to use this opportunity. So I wanted to get, on, get you on another uh, quick interview during our campaign is like, this isn't about me making a movie and everyone watching it and me being put on a pedestal. It's like, there's a community here and the wind center ground podcast about like bringing in more artists and you're a perfect example of like finding an artist who is making something awesome that like, let's, let's show the world that thing and like build the audience for like getting out of this bizarre, like trend, anything that could be a yeah. life transition. And I think that we all went through something pretty intense and it, and it shows up in all this music and I, it's like post cult music is amazing yeah it's um uh, it's important to have stuff that focuses on the transition like there's so much there's a lot of stuff obviously about that focuses on waking up and all that stuff but it doesn't really tell you like well where do you go from there <laughs> you know it's it's mm -hmm. all the it's all the post leaving yeah. stuff that that really really uh is challenging so um uh, yeah, it, it's, well, it's funny. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because you kind of said how. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that um, 
one thing that's always been on the back of my mind too, that I've always wanted to talk to you guys about. And I always forget is like, I would love for us one year to come out with an XJW Christmas album. Like have all these artists come together <laughs> and, and come out with the Christmas album. That's fun. Do you have a song in mind or like a, any kind of angle? I don't yet. I haven't thought that far. I just like, I, I see all these Christmas albums come out every December and I'm just like, it would be so hilarious to just have a bunch of XJW singing Christmas songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess you, you could do as simple as doing a remake, like do a cover yeah, of a classic, cover. even be frosty the yeah. snowman. If you want to be a yeah, religious, doing something, you know, <laughs> um, feeling so guilty all these years about singing along in your head, you know, while you're shopping. <laughs> right. Then to have one that's like part of the resistance yeah. movement. And, and as a joke, exactly. it could be fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I feel really squirrely around like November, December. I like last year was actually one of the worst, it, but it's like my whole life. Like everyone has an exclusive party to go to that I'm not invited to. And I don't have a thing yeah. to do for, for that week. And I definitely don't have anything to do with the month and a half leading up to that special week where I'm just like, I need to get the hell out of this. Like I'm like swimming in dirty yeah. water and I like hate the feeling. And I know that week's just going to be like filled with weird anxieties about like, I miss my family, even though, even if I was with my family, they're not doing yeah. anything. They're just, there's like nothing to do because we're like, no, we're against this. We're against the whole world in resistance. We're not having any fun. Like what? Why? <laughs> why are you doing that? Life's too short for that shit. Right. So I always go like travel. So last year I was like, get me getting the fuck out. I'm going to Miami. And my friend invited me. Um, she's a big friend of everyone in the movie. And we've become friends since making the movie. Um, Kate, What's up, Kate. Um, so we ended up hanging out in my, in Miami for art Basel. It was like a great new party. You got to check out Art Basel someday. It's crazy parties and like festivals and celebrations of all kinds of art. It's all kinds of stuff. Um, but I ended up staying there for like the whole month. And I went to Panama for the holidays and it's like, and I'm, I'm very like free. I don't have any costs in my life. So I'm like, it's like cheaper to travel sometimes than it is to stay oh, yeah. in one place, no. <laughs> especially if it's Los Angeles, yeah. <laughs> but just like getting out and not doing, not doing holiday, being immersed in holiday songs at going grocery shopping. <laughs> it's like, oof. it's a, it's so refreshing to not, <laughs> but yeah, let's do a JW Christmas album. Just add bells to a song. There we, do. Christmas. we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure Ryan would be on board with that. Ryan, oh Sonny. yeah, he'll probably like help help mix the the soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> or something. Ryan's got Ryan's got amazing ears. I, I love. That. Yeah. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you something. Oh, oh I was gonna say I, I just that was one of the the cool things about uh, the film was get, being able to get exposed to all that music. You know, aside from it, you know, the story being important and the message being important, like. I got to hear so much good music. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It's an incredible body of work before, even before the, the thing kind of fell apart. Like the Jehovah's witness rock music was yeah, solid, like I, really, really good albums. I, that's what out. I keep reminding myself when I, when I watch this documentary over and over again, it's like, it's not like they were like post, you know, JW and out and free. Like they were doing this with a lot to lose potentially. Like people don't realize like they were putting a yeah. lot on the line, just creating that music, just being able to wanting to think freely and, and be creative and stuff like that. They're, just like any cult, whether it's religious or, or government, like all art is supposed to be geared towards the cult. So if you're not making music for, yeah. you know, King John Hill or music for, you know, <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses and that's frowned upon. So, uh, I'm just so motivated by their bravery that they were able to, you know, do that stuff back then. Yeah. I like that you, you invoked Kim Jong Il, um, <laughs> because I lived in Vietnam after leaving the religion okay. for five years and, and, and there's still propaganda art from the night from the 1960s, 70s up on the walls, but they're kind of removing it slowly and it's, and it's like rusting and like, it looks kind of dismal. But they also put up like billboards of like, hey, we have an election coming up where we have um, one person you can vote for. And then we're calling that <laughs> democracy. And it's like still a military. And they, but they show the same kind of imagery that Jehovah's Witnesses do. And it's like a bunch of family yeah. all working together with baskets of fruit and, and vegetables and farming rice and 
and it's beautiful, but they're all working together. And they have the hammer yeah. and the sickle and the, the, the rice plow and the buffalo. And it's like Jehovah's Witnesses kind of had the exact oh, same yeah. imagery as this dystopian communist society. So we basically grew up in North Korea, um, communist yeah. Russia, and like with the, but like none of the yeah. benefits of that. But all of the you'll we get to have communism one day. If only we just work really hard now, you get to eventually get to have yeah. communism. <laughs> like what a weird world to go Yeah, <laughs> I remember seeing that their art for the first time and going, Why is this eerily familiar? Yeah. And for obvious reasons now. <laughs> um Yeah. I was gonna say I, I wanted to ask you, okay, so bloodless you mentioned just now that uh, that third album was sort of like a, a present. This is the music of now. It's not really anything tied to the religion. Um, and, and that, and you also mentioned that like no one really talks about what happens after, like you made music about the transition. Um, and I feel like, I feel like the present moment is almost like if to use like a surfing analogy, like when you can like try hard to get on the wave and then, then when you're on the wave, it's like, you're in it, you're, you're hundred percent in the moment. And if you, and you can play and have a really good time, but it's, it's fast paced and things are happening. Um, and if you, if you flinch, if you look forward too much, if you look backwards too much, you, you're going to get wiped yep. out by the wave and you, it's a short ride. You can always get another wave, but like in a way, like we're riding this, maybe bloodless is like your present album, but what is the future look like to you? Like, what do you, like where there's this time where wit ex witnesses like are looking back a lot. And then, then there's a moment where you get to be present, but then, then there can be like this future, like excitement about what you're working yeah. on. And I want people to get there, like shorten that, shorten that gap to like being angry and frustrated and looking back and missing family and relationships to like looking forward and being excited about the thing you have going on. Yeah. It's a lot like, uh, you know, a lot like a, a breakup, a relationship breakup, you know? And it's like, there's counsel for when things are going rough in the relationship, there's counsel for when it's starting to break away. There's counsel for when it finally is over. And a lot of times people are, don't think about like, Oh yeah, there's always the potential for that next partner. There's always a the potential for so many new experiences and, and memories and happiness. And you know, it, that it's not the end with that relationship. And that's where, you know, I finally reached in my life. It's like, I don't really interact with anybody anymore. That's XJW. Uh, like, it's just so much of a past now for me. And, you know, everything pretty much is now filled with like excitement and potential. Like, that's all I think can really describe it as like, there's just so much potential now. You know, we grow up with so many restrictions. Mm -hmm so many restrictions and it's like, you know, it's easy to be like institutionalized when you grow up like that. Like, you know, the few conversations I had with my mother before, you know, we all cu cut off contact was like basically her admitting like, well, I'm institutionalized. Like I wouldn't even know what to do with freedom, David, you know, that kind of like thought. And she's like, wow, that's, mm. that's scary. There's so much to do. Wow. Yeah. That's a really interesting analogy. Like, why would I want to leave this perfect place where like everything's yeah. knowable, everything's known and, and easy and provided yeah. for me in the institution. Like I like I my like cage my bars. Cage. Yeah. Great. That's basically what she said. I like my cage. Like I'd never want to leave my cage. I'm just like, but there's this huge world outside your cage. Like, yeah. She just couldn't right. fathom it. Like I, like she was just honest. Like I, I would have no idea what to do. Like, Wow. I don't know about that. So, yeah. It's interesting because they, they spend so much time talking about this imaginary fantasy future where they'll be able to do anything that they dream of. They can't do any of that yeah. now, but they will be able to later. So what is that? Make it, make it real for you is like yeah. their language. What do you imagine for your future? You can do all that stuff today. If your imagination is, is only goes as far as like what you see in that picture, you want that, you want this padded lion and you want to have fruit and you want to have a lake and a house next yeah. to a lake. Like, fruit lions a house and a lake all exist right now, right now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to wait until you die to get those things <laughs> and, and no genocide required you know like right yeah it's so much easier than killing, killing everyone, everyone and <laughs> building on top of that <laughs> 
What's your next album? So next album uh, <laughs> is going to be um, my '60s psychedelic inspired album. Obviously, you know, I grew up. Oh, yeah. I grew mm -hmm. up on the Beatles, on the Doors, you know, that kind of psychedelic music. But again, you know, it, it was it was already like risky enough just to listen to that stuff. You know, like really, yeah, wow. like I. Yeah. Uh, we used to have talent shows at this one congregation and like I played, a I played a Lou Reed song and like the elders had to like go over it and the lyrics and all the stuff before they approved to do it like a stupid <laughs> talent show. And it's like, I had purposely picked a song that was like innocent. Like it didn't have any drug references. Right. That would put a lot of risks on you. If you didn't take some time to curate your song, you're going to play in front of this particular yeah. audience. Right. So like that, I, <laughs> I remember once there in a public talk, this brother was like going off about how, you know, the world's viewpoints change, but Jehovah's people aren't. And he's like, if you don't think your viewpoints have changed, he's like, how many of you listen to the Beatles? Like he like referenced them specifically. And he's like, because they were full of, you know, Satanism and drug use. He's like, in the 60s, Jehovah's people wouldn't listen to that. Jehovah's people wouldn't tolerate that, but they do now. And it's just like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, there's still people wow. in, in this wow. religion that think like that. And it's like, if 60s rock wow. is, is too risky for you like <laughs> too yeah edgy. that's too edgy for you man <laughs> right? you don't want to listen to anything uh going on right now so uh yeah i grew up on that it's uh it's yeah. called uh, uh sketches and sound which mm. is kind of inspired cool. by uh, miles davis and his sketches in spain i don't know if you've ever listened to that album mm. but no, I don't um, know that one. It's an album that sketches. In yeah, Spain, it's called Sketches in Spain. Um, it it was a real big inspiration, I guess, for Radiohead during uh, like Kid A and uh, OK Computer mm -hmm. uh, era, and it's cool. like this really wow. weird psychedelic uh, jazz album called Sketches in Spain. And I was like, oh, I kind of like that sound. I'm like, hey, I'm working on sounds. Let's Sketches and Sound. So yeah got that coming out it. so that that'll be there's released as soon as i get my repairs done <laughs> oh yeah okay so like you've actually already written and tracked a lot of yeah. this album yeah it's just locked just up locked up computer. on a computer yeah worst case scenario i'm gonna have to re-record the whole album so not, not ideal, ideal at all yeah i'm hoping it's just I'm going to fly you up to Minneapolis in worst case scenario and have it retract next year. Yeah, by Ryan. I, <laughs> Ryan yeah, team. One of these days. I'm... One album. I would love. Yeah. One of these I want to send artists to nuclear go for studios. Obviously Ryan's like, he's like, I control who I record with and he, he curates the whole thing. So it's not my, I'm not really a wing, but I, I want to like make sure people know he exists so they can send your samples yeah, to him. <laughs> yeah. I would love to work with him, yeah. but I'm yeah. sure he would work with you. At least yeah. to us. I also have an, a fully analog uh, recording studio connection in Madison, Wisconsin. The guys who I played with uh, in high school, um, he went on to buy the same machine that Zeppelin recorded their albums on, the Beatles, like a full inch reel to reel tape machine. He's like one of the last few in the world wow. and he like maintains it. Like he, he's an analog, fully analog studio in Madison. So I can connect you with him if that interests you, especially for the sixties album, that could be really interesting to like record on what they yeah, recorded on. That's it. That is really interesting. I haven't heard anybody using tape really at all. Yeah. His name's Kyle urban and he was in the motors for a long time. I think they still have some gigs. My old, my old buddies, my old band, um, which is crazy. Cause like I left that band to do make my own music and like have a band in the witnesses. <laughs> Like I found musicians in the religion and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do the right thing for God and like make my band in the religion. And, <laughs> and so I abandoned hanging out with those guys and playing with the clones as we were known then. And then they, they moved to Madison from our hometown and formed the motors with a, with a new guitarist and a new drummer. And they played for 18 years. Wow. So like over the last couple of decades, I'd go back to visit and I would pop in on my, you know, it's not my band, but it felt yeah. like my band. Like I get to go see my own band playing from high school. And it's like, how, <laughs> how it like, felt so surreal. They weren't playing the same songs, yeah. obviously. And they'd like grown a lot musically. Um, but it was really fun. But they're, yeah, they're still, they're still going for it for the analog sound. You got to really pull cool. a Sid Barrett. 
<laughs> yeah, come out of it. He was trapped in a cult for decades, and now he's back. Like, <laughs> damn, that'd be fun. I should do a song with that those guys, be, just yeah, for old time's cool. sake. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was, you mentioned something else important. Oh, I lost it. That's cool. I'm excited for you. We'll get your computer repaired. Let's uh, do what I can to help you out with that. I'm sure it's like usually it's like just a broken hard drive or like our salvageable hard drive and then yeah. you're back. But anyway, that's exciting. Are there any themes in there that are tied to this this faith group or have you like it's all now you're uh, in the, you're in your normal new Yeah, not so world. much on not so much on this this 60 psychedelic album because I kind of just delved into all my favorite little you know bands growing up. I I just I listened to a lot of that music when I was a teenager. Um you know, and yeah. uh, some of my earliest memories are of like my dad and his his best friend in the in the J Dub religion, just you know, singing Beatles songs all night. You know, so um, this not so much cool. the album after that, that '90s theme album um, that does have a couple references. Um, I did write one song that was inspired by a pretty famous J Dub song. Um, I posted it, a uh, little sample of me playing it uh, a month ago. And yeah, Instagram. and everyone that's, Bloody yeah, Tuesdays. and everyone that's listened to it has like messaged me or, or commented like, oh, wow, I remember this one. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that one has a, a couple songs that were kind of just inspired by the music and that. So I guess I wasn't fully done yet. But I think when you, if you want to do it, think what? Sorry. Oh, I think I think uh, you know once that comes out, people. It seems like people recognize that one because some of the some of the songs that I have that okay. have uh, that have been inspired by old Kingdom songs are pretty hidden. People are just like, oh, I would never guess that. Yeah, I, I, I would never guess. That. I didn't ever yeah. notice that until I play them the original, and they're like, now I hear it. But I think this one, I kind of purposely yeah. like made it obvious, maybe to an antagonize the religion somewhat. <laughs> yeah. A couple things. I want to talk about a film that inspired me to make my first film, Hanoi Mixtape. It's called, um, in a way, it's a Beatles connection because they played Hamburg yeah. forever, and that's how they became solid right. and famous. Um, they're like a daily band at a bar. But Berlin had a crazy music experience during the Cold War. Is Berlin was like an island in the Russian dominated world. And um, they had the wall around Berlin, but inside was the West and they had their Western freedoms, but they had to like fly airplanes over the communist land to land there. So it was like this bizarro world in there. And um, there's this, there's art, this film that played in, in Hanoi. And so we'll refer to Hanoi as like the Berlin of the, of Asia, the Berlin of the East or whatever. Which is a weird thing, but I like, I like it's like a strange connection. But there's a documentary part g group there, but it, it, with the Gotha Institute, which is the German center there. And um, there's a big connection to the East Germany in Hanoi during the Cold War. A lot of, a lot of Vietnamese people speak German in there if they're over the oh, six wow. years old. Anyway, I watched this film because it's like this Berlin documentarian. He's actually a British guy from Manchester, but he was like flipping through vinyl and he was picking out all this Berlin vinyl that was like new experimental stuff in the late 70s. And he moved to Berlin in 79 to check it out. And he, they end up making a movie with all this archival footage and all this amazing music called it's like lust and sound lust, lust and sex, lust, uh, something like, sorry, I'm going to mess it up. It's like lust and sound in, Ber in West Berlin, 79 to 89. And that documentary for me, like blew my mind. And we got to meet the director in like a Q and a after like, like a oh, Skype wow. call with the whole audience. Um, and I, I was like talking, I was there with my musician friends in Hanoi who are from South Africa and Chile. And they're in this couple different incredible bands. I'm still in touch with those guys. And we, we formed Banana Island Films oh, because okay. of it. Um, to we were making music videos already. And we ended up, I was like, let's make a documentary about what's happening in Hanoi. It's like, it's so similar what was to what was happening in West Berlin. And like, they're like fighting, like they're fighting ca communism here in a way through art, but it's a like very, very low buds they're not like 
Anyway, I love that movie so much, and I made a film inspired by it, and it led me to make this film. So I highly recommend it as a music lover. Yeah, to check definitely. That, out. that sounds really cool. Um, yeah, I'll send you. I'll send a link, and I'll post. I'm going to post this into the the blast out in the world, so I like, have a little all the things. Um, I was going to ask you. So, as someone who's like making music, you're driven to make music, and you're you're like using it. It feels like. Could you comment on how it has helped you? As one thing. Yeah. And then also the other thing is who, who else is doing something similar that you've discovered in the sure. world? Um, but how has music yeah, helped you? It's, it's definitely helped as basically therapy um, for lack of a better word, because um, I just felt so alone through the process because I was doing it by myself, um, you know, cause I was fourth generation. So everybody in my family, is pretty much a JW. So when I started waking up uh, and I was married at the time, like I didn't even tell my wife at the time, like I was holding all of this on the inside. And uh, I, I honestly felt like I was going to break. Like I had a, I did have a mental breakdown in the middle of it. Um, I lost sight in one eye for a while, like for three or four months. Like I had blind in one eye, like the, wow. the, the stress, the stress. And the pressure and the, the expectation of loss. Like, I don't know how else to describe it other than it felt like I was like living in a zombie land because I was talking and interacting with all these people that I knew I could lose at any time. And like, I remember I would get like, I remember mm. my dad, my, my father called me up one day wow. and He's, you know, he's just chatting with me and he had a couple questions about his investments and like me just like fighting off a panic attack and having a full blown crying meltdown because all I could think of is next month we not, we might not be talking anymore. And wow. just thinking yeah. like, what, like, what do I do with all this? Like, I don't know what to do with all this. And the job I had at the time, I, I, was, I was alone a lot. So sometimes being alone with your own thoughts can be the best thing. And sometimes being alone with your thoughts can be the worst thing. And so just spending a lot of time by myself while I'm going through all this just made me really depressed. It made me really anxious. And I didn't really believe or have experience with um, therapy at the time. So I had to find a way, like, mm -hmm. I just had to find a way to deal with all of this. And I had not really picked up a guitar for about five or 10 years. Like I, I learned guitar and piano when I was like 11, taught myself up until about the, I was about 20. And then, you know, you got to become a ministerial servant. You got to get married. You got to have kids. And I kind of just fell into that J dub lifestyle that was expected of me. And then, so I just, you know, I turned back to the thing I loved. So I was just like, just use music as therapy. And whatever I felt, I just started writing. I'd write lyrics or I'd write chord progressions. And it kind of just took off from there and it just made things a lot easier. So that, you know, when everything did finally come down, I, I could listen to that. I could listen to my own songs and be like, you know, you're going to make it. You know, there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Not only is there a light, there's a whole world outside that tunnel. And a lot mm -hmm. of stranded and Saturn is about that. Just feeling alone and trying to figure out like, but you're not. And here's why, you know, you're connected to everything biologically. Wow. You're connected to everything chemically. You know, you're connected to everyone on this planet. You're connected to this planet. You're connected to this universe. And that's kind of what started the whole inspiration of making it like space themed and science themed was like, that kind of gave me comfort while I was going through all that kind of stuff. Wow. That's really profound and deep. I feel like it's almost like your subconscious was like needing an outlet, but then also giving you a pep talk. Yeah. And it's like the subconscious now lives in your music and he's talking to the living um, yeah. conscious david on the outside that's a great analogy keeping no, that, you sane yeah trying that's to. a great analogy because there have been times where i've gone back to listen to those songs or, or look at the lyrics and i go wow like that has so much meaning for me now 
it was like future me going back and sending me messages yeah. because there's I it was completely subconscious. Wow. A lot of times those lyrics and stuff were subconscious. So when you said that, like, yeah, it wow. that's exactly what it was like. Now that I look back, I'm like, wow. Now I, I totally see what I was going through when I was thinking and Mm. Was, it's like a journal entry for the whole yeah, world to see. Yeah, it really is. A lot of times, I'm just like, "Do I really want my diary out there?" You know, it's it's not just <laughs> it's not just music. It's not just words I put together. A lot of a lot of those is just me being completely vulnerable. Like the first song on Stranded in Saturn is called uh, "Tears and Rain," and you know. When I look back at the lyrics, like it's basically a suicide note. When I look at it, like that song is wow. basically my suicide note going, I don't know. I, maybe I need to just check out. Like, I don't, I'm just feel a thousand light years away from everybody. And I don't think I'm ever getting back. But so, yeah, it, those, those albums wow. are very personal. Uh, so anybody that's taken the time to listen to it, you know, really, really appreciate um, you know, anybody taking the time to listen to me cry. <laughs> <laughs> and then write a love letter to David Casada about how yeah, I put him into you. Definitely. <laughs> Bloody Tuesdays on Instagram. That's been actually an amazing thing about people that watch this film is it's, it, I get letters like every, I mean, it's some percentage, probably like 10% of people will like sit down and like, Oh man, that really hit me. Oh, like, man, thank I, you for making that. Or I watched I it. I pulled my eyes out the first time I watched yeah. it, Scott. I'm just, just to be completely honest. I, I remember finishing it at my girlfriend's house, going to the bathroom and just crying my eyes out. It was so strong. It was just so uh, emotional, but yeah, it's great. It's a great documentary. <laughs> It's, it's strange because I don't think I've ever gotten an emotional response from watching anyone else's documentaries. So like maybe I made something else. <laughs> like maybe it's not exactly a documentary, you know, like it's a trigger, <laughs> a trigger festival. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like I didn't, I wanted to make something that meant something emotional to yeah. me. Like that, like, like, or you were saying like, Hey, don't, like, yeah, we can have a whole conversation about our past, but watch this, listen to this podcast that I had on Witness Underground Podcast, and then we can talk after that. And then you send me your video that you did about your, you know, experience, and we'll get to know each other. And I wanted to kind of have that for myself. Like, no matter how many hours of I've spent talking to someone about my past or my life, no one understands really how it works if they have no connection to it. And I wanted to make something that I could say, like, just go watch my movie. And then if you want to have a conversation, yeah. let's do it. Because I've spent 20 hours talking to someone and they still didn't understand anything and they made assumptions. Yep. Or And most people give you a maximum of like two minutes to talk about your past because they have their own past and they don't really care yeah. about you that much. Like no one really has that much attention and time yeah. for others. Um, and that's totally fine. But like if you really want to understand, you kind of need more. And it, I felt like I could talk to you for years and you would never understand. So let me just, I want to make a movie that's like, you get 90 minutes, 80 minutes, and then, and now we can have a conversation and you can understand something about me that's more, more honest and more true. Um, but maybe that's, it's like packing a lot of information yeah. <laughs> and a lot of emotional stuff into a story. And I'm really happy that the people in the film, because I'm not in it, the people in the film were able to be that vulnerable and um, open to tell a story that's so parallels enough. You know, it's not just paralleling my life. It parallels your life, parallels others who struggled um, and got out. Yep. But thank you for sharing that ha had that effect on you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I'm excited to hear your next albums. I want everyone to go listen to the Bloody Tuesdays. Um, yeah. Thank you for being a part of the whole the whole world. It's been a pleasure. Is there anything you want to say to your audience or people that are finding your music for the first time? Um, I appreciate it. Um, I'm I'm not the kind of person that ignores you know DMs and stuff like that. Every time someone's reached out to me. You know, I always, I always make sure to, to respond and, and give them, you know, a very personal message back because, you know, I've been on that other side going, 
oh my gosh, there's there's some something out there. And you know, they took the time to 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 listen to something. They took the time to appreciate it. Uh, there is there is one project that I I wanted to throw at you guys. So maybe something sometime in the future is uh, my song "The Light Gets Brighter." Uh, you know, that song is basically about mm. you know, victims of the cult. You know, I, I really delve into people that have been really hurt by that cult, have lost their lives, have lost their so much from it. And it's one song that I've always wanted to make a video and kind of mix images of, you know, the terrifying images that we grew up looking at as well as like when it gets to the end, when it starts to focus on, you know, the lyrics of the people that survived all the survivors of it about how the light gets brighter. You know, it, it first starts out with like being sarcastic about that phrase because it's really just their cop out when they're wrong. But at the, by the end of the song, it's about, you know, having that potential, you know, the, the light yeah. does get brighter, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And just having the end of that video just filled with survivors, you know, just little clips of survivors, whether it's a picture, uh, it's a video of them waving, or even, you know, pictures and videos of people that didn't make it. You know, I've always had that picture in my head of ending, having a video of that song and it ending with, you know, just survivors and people we've lost to it to just, you know, kind of have three minute video of someone being able to say, oh, yeah it does get brighter. There are people that survived this, you know, it is possible to live outside of this. So I've, I've talked to a couple different um, activists that have kind of like had interest in, in maybe collaborating with that. So that might be something we might be able to do down the line. That's awesome. I love that. A call to action. Yeah. Um, so if you're out there and that music video idea resonates with you, get in touch with David at the Bloody Tuesdays on Instagram. Um, and I'm interested in, in helping. Like I have, I have a skill set now that I've, I've earned through making a couple of films and working on a bunch of other commercial stuff where I'd at least be happy to consult on it or like help bring the level of quality up whoever ends up working on it. Um, if not actually work with you on it. It's a really cool project idea. I actually hadn't thought about that as making some music yeah. videos for your for your work. That's a great idea. And this is something I want to um, put out to everyone. Like, yeah, we're excited about releasing our movie, and we made a big campaign that's really focused on that and the music surrounding our project. But there is more to this thing, and you're you're one of my favorite examples of someone who's there was a nuclear gopher community in the religion. There's the post nuclear gopher community that made music that is a big part of the campaign, and then there's the Witness Underground yeah. podcast, which is like, hey, there's a, there's a present to this, and there's musicians right now making music right now, and we're we're like we're doing stuff now, and there's like I'm so excited about what happens after the Kickstarter's over and the film yeah. is out, so we can actually like focus on doing new present exactly. creative I'm stuff. About that too. It's not just I'm a nostalgic documentary too. piece. So it's a, yeah, cool. You know, we talked a little bit about having maybe like a concert or, and I like your idea of like, let's, no, let's, remote work is a little easier. Let's do a Christmas album where like everyone sends one song to do like a compilation. It's funny and cool. Um, it's fun. It's like, let's do something inspiring. Yeah, you can take your digs on the religion exactly. here and there. That's fun. But also like, let's just yep. enjoy life in the present and do some collaborative creative stuff. <laughs> Awesome. I love it. Thank you, David. Uh, let's wrap it up. I uh, appreciate everyone coming here. Check out the Kickstarter campaign. If you go to witnessunderground.com, it redirects right now to the campaign. So it's easy to remember, witnessunderground.com. And check out all of David's music. We're, it's, it's available in the campaign. It's not super highlighted. We'll get some images in there and add them to the story. Um, but yeah, check out, let's see, Hymns of Millennials Dawn. And we've got Stranded on Saturn. And we have Bloodless. And we've got two more albums coming out of 60s. Yep and yeah, a 90s you. style Appreciate inspiring thank thing you. you too cool thanks a lot dave all right take care david <laughs>